everybody's doing really well today. I wanted to do a quick roundup of all of my George to Fex's coloring books. Um, if you're not familiar with his work, he collaborates with Creative Haven and he creates super beautiful but super detailed color by number books. As far as I know, he does not have any non-color by number coloring books. Please do correct me if that's not correct. I just haven't seen them. Um, I love his stuff. I would one day really, really like to own all of his coloring books. Um, I know he just had one come out. There's also one that is available for pre-order for 2023, I think. So he's a busy man. There's a lot of wonderful material. I own five of his books and I wanted to go through and show you all of my completed pages. Maybe talk about the materials, like the supplies that I use and then anything else in between. So I did go through and kind of tab all of my completed pages as you can see. And I figured we can go in an order of the least done in the book to the most done in the book. So the one that I have the least done in is Autumn Inspirations. It is also one of the newer, newest ones in my collection. I think this one and the next one I got at the same time and they're the newest in my George Tufex's collection. So each book has 46 illustrations and they're always like previews on the cover. You have your color palette. I believe the color palette changes from book to book. Um, it does, yes, the numbers change. But anyway, so in this book, I done, I've done three pages, I believe. So it's the least I've done in any of his books. Um, here I have this delightful pumpkin page that I actually really, really enjoyed working on. I remember it. I love all the vivid, deep, rich colors in this. So I was a fan of this one. And I believe this was just all uh, water-based markers. So I use Crayola Super Tips in here as well as the Stadler dual-sided markers. So really enjoy that one. And then we have this one. So the books do have vertical and horizontal images. As far as I know, all of them do. I remember working on this page and for some reason, this page just took it out of me. Like I was so uninspired, so uninterested, unbothered, whatever you wanna say, but I had gotten like halfway done with this page and I was just done. But I did persevere, I obviously did finish the page, but yeah, something about this page was really not inspiring to me. Couldn't tell you what it was, but for some reason that page really, I don't say bothered me, but I wasn't a big fan. Um, and then this page was the first one that I did in this book. And I remember because it was in July, so I do mark my pages. It was July of last year when I had gotten this book and I wanted to wor work in it, but obviously it's all autumn scenes. So I was like, let me find a picture that was more, less like in your face fall. <laughs> and I guess apple picking is it. But I figured, you know, like spending time in the garden, flowers could be summer. So I picked this page, really like it. Again, I love the vibrancy of the colors. I think this was all, yep, it was all water-based markers as well. So very, very nice. Usually what I do nowadays is before I start any of his pages, I will go through the color palette at the beginning and I will pick out all the markers and just line them up in front of me and then go in and color the page. So then since I already have all the markers, I tend to do multiple pages um, kind of right after the other because I already have the markers pulled. But I think I wasn't doing that when I did this page. But anyways, helpful tip because I feel like pulling the color specific number, um, color specific markers is like the most time consuming part. So I will just pre align them before I start the picture. So the next book that I have, and I got it at the same time that I got the Autumn Inspirations. I just went on like George Tufex's kick one day and ordered, I think three of his books, two of his books off of Amazon. But anyways, this is Country Scenes and it's super cute. Love the Red Barn. Same amount, the standard 46 images. 
And in here, I think I'm going in order. But I've done four pages in this book. And I remember when I did this one, I was questioning this. Like, is there a fire? Should we be concerned? What is that? But when I looked at the preview, like, I don't know if you'll be able to see, um, it's also in there. So that's not like I messed up the colors somehow. I guess mine are maybe a little bit darker than theirs, but still, like, it was meant to be there. So a little concerned about potential, like, forest fire in this image. But besides that, it is adorable. So that's the first one. Then this really sweet one with a ducky. If you wanted to own this book, make sure you have lots of shades of green. Green is very dominant in here. Then this one I did earlier this year. I love a red painted barn. Maybe that's the New Englander in me, but I just think it's beautiful. Is this a barn? You know, is this potentially a church? I'm not sure, but I love the fact that it's uh, red. So very sweet, giant butterfly. I hope that's not to scale or it's just because it's close to us because it is ginormous. But again, this is all water-based markers. And then this one's a little bit of a preview for this month because I did it last week, but um, very sweet page. Again, lots and lots of green. Don't even bother going into this book if you don't own lots of greens or refillable greens because you will go through green markers. I sure did. Um, it just, it is what it is. I mean, kind of comes with the territory, I guess, of outdoor pictures. But yeah, I'm just going in order in this one and then the next one has a very sweet little bear. So I'm really excited for this one. The pages are all perforated, so if you wanted to tear any of them out, you can. I haven't. I, I'm not really one to like hang up my work or frame my work. I don't know why, I just am not. So all the pages stay in here, but you do have the option with a perforated edge. The next book is Around the World, Color by Number. I'm sorry, obviously Color by Number. And I think I've done like five or six in here or something like that. And I had the biggest struggle trying to get my hands on this book. I had pre-ordered it because it came out last year, 2021. And my order was then canceled after the book was released. I, pre I reordered it. It was canceled again. I ended up purchasing it in the U.S. to be shipped to my parents' house. And then when I went to the U.S., I took it back with me to Germany. So basically I imported it because for some reason it was like not, German Amazon was refusing to ship it to me basically. <laughs> um, so the first page that I did is the Athens page. I do like that on the side, um, they specify like where this image is supposed to be because some of them it can be a little bit difficult to tell, especially, you know, with less known architecture, for example. Like if you see the Eiffel Tower, like you know where that is, but you know, not everything else is that well known, right? So we did the Athens page, then another horizontal page of Canada. I remember when I had posted this in my completed pages video for whatever month I did it, September, 2021, I had somebody comment and say that, oh, like I've actually been there. So I thought that was really cool. So nice Canada page. I've been to Canada, um, but I went to Quebec City. Really, really stunning city. Uh, the old town is beautiful. Then we have Barcelona, Spain, where I also have been. I don't know why the sky is so colorful. It was not that colorful when I was there, but that's fine. <laughs> um, Barcelona is just stunning. I got probably the worst sunburn of my life while I was there. That was a good time. But yeah, I did this in April of this year. And then um, I wanted to skip out of order to do the page of Germany, just because that's where I am residing as of right now. So just wanted to do the German page. And of course there's a castle, because you know Germany, we love a good castle. And yeah, but this one just says Germany doesn't specify a town, so maybe it's not a real, maybe like this scene is not from a real place, I don't know, but 
This is Germany, and I think this was also water-based markers. Yeah. Um, I also do sometimes mix in some permanent markers. I have some Bix um, that I mix in here. Not the super fine. I think they're called medium tip. I don't know. The super fine are definitely like the Sharpie super fine kind of size I find to be too small. But that is around the world. Again, George, two fixes. Then the book that I have owned the longest from him, and it's the second greatest amount that I've done in any of his books. So I believe this was also my first ever color by number book. So this is a little sentimental to me just because I've had it for um, over two years now, I think. So this book has a wider range of um, supplies just because again this was my first book so I was just first of all using whatever I had because I had less supplies but then also trying to figure out what worked for me and what didn't so for example this page is from July 15th 2020 I'm filming this on July 17th so this is just a little too a little over two years old I used budget pencils in here that's why it's not super vibrant I think there were like local uh, drugstore brand uh, colored pencils so I did that one I do have a whip in here that's been a whip for ages um, and then this one is from last year and I had at this point switched to using water-based markers there we go so very fun very nice and then going back to another color pencil page. So if you're not familiar with his books, he has like the color palette, right? And then he has a shade called Zero, which is supposed to be just a shaded version of the color that it's next to. So when I first started coloring in these books, I was really confused by that Zero and I didn't really know what to do. So that's kind of why you see a bunch of like white patches. I mean, some of them I'm sure are supposed to be white, but with those, I just like didn't really know what I was supposed to do, so I just left them white. So instead of shading them, I made them extra light. That was good planning on my part, but that's kind of why there's some white patches. But at this point, this page is done. Like, I'm not gonna go back in and change it. Then I think this was one of the first pages, if not the first page that I tried to do using water-based markers in this book i remember not being too impressed because like the skin colors were really off like some of these people were supposed to be the exact same shade as like the chair they were sitting on or the flower pot that they were next to and i mean it makes sense right you have a limited color palette there's like 20 colors or something like that 25 so like i get it but at the time i was just not impressed and i thought that the color pencils was a better choice i don't know why but i did and then Moving on to more colored pencil pages. <laughs> this is a lovely flower stand. I mean, look how like dull the black is. Maybe it looks okay on camera, but in person, the black is really dull. So these were very, very cheap pencils. I no longer have them. Did donate them. I absolutely detested doing this page. I remember it. And I remember strongly disliking myself for picking this page because all of these hats had so many different colors. I kept on like being like, okay, like we don't need any more purple, right? I got all the purples, like putting the purple away, then finding another purple spot. So at one point I just got basically annoyed and started just coloring in random colors because I was tired of pulling and setting down pencils. So the t-shirts and caps page was not my favorite, but it's done. Also colored pencils. Then, one from earlier this year, um, water-based markers. So this one was also a little bit, like I kept on missing certain colors. Like I forgot there's another patch of blue somewhere and that kind of stuff. But it was not as obnoxious as the cap page. Then in here, I tried using alcohol markers and this is the only one that I did with alcohol markers. And that is because 
as you saw, a lot of his pages have super duper small detailing and alcohol markers realistically just don't work for that. But as you can see, definitely alcohol markers. I had even written down um, the markers that are used. So the left number is the color in the book from the color palette and the one on the right is the marker number. But yeah, I don't think I'll be doing that again unless there is some page that has bigger areas. Like that was why I specifically chose this page because it doesn't have too many crazy small details as compared to some of the other pages. I think it's 100% alcohol marker. Yeah, there might be a, maybe some permanent marker, but I think it is all alcohol marker. So that was that one. And then the book uh, that I've done the most in is the Christmas one. I adore this book. I will finish this book one day just because the pictures are so fun and so beautiful when you finish them. So let's see, I did Blue Santa. I really like that he is in wearing something a little bit different than the standard white suit, not white suit. Who am I talking about? <laughs> the red, red suit with the white trimming, right? So I like that it's a little bit different. I love the contrast of the yellow, you know, the yellow moon, yellow, whatever it is, as compared to this blue sky. I think it's really pretty. And then we move on to this one and these are all water-based markers. So very nice, that's from 2020. Then I skipped the bird page, shocker. Moved on to this one um, from 2021. This kind of reminds me a little bit of that Germany page that I showed you just because it has like deer in the front. Um, but this one also kind of screams New England to me because we have these kind of like um, similar looking houses and of course the snow and the wildlife. Our first horizontal page in here and this is from last year. A very cozy cabin. Really liked this one. Then a vertical from 2020. So that's what I was that's what I was trying to talk about when I was talking about Santa's regular outfit. But love, 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 love it. With this book, you definitely need lots of green and red for most of the pictures, at least, for obvious reasons. Then moving on to this nutcracker. I remember being really happy with the wallpaper in the back. Like I really enjoyed the process, but I thought it was horrendously ugly. Like to have that as a wallpaper in somebody's house, I think would be just a tad much, but I liked coloring it. But I remember once I was done, I was like, ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. But yes, that is this page. Also, I'm sorry, is that a really small tree or is that a ginormous nutcracker? Because the nutcracker is like the size of the tree. So I'm not sure about that one when it comes to the scaling of it. I love how this one turned out. I think my favorite is the Joy. I think the O is really, really sweet with the uh, wreath. And this little car is so cute. My little nephew has one, he loves it. So I'm sure whatever kiddo this is for is gonna adore it. So that is from 2020. Another ginormous nutcracker. I know some people like love nutcrackers. I am impartial on the topic, I guess I would say. My parents do have some and we'll put them out every single year, but I don't, I'm not drawn to nutcrackers, but at the same time, I'm not anti them. Um, I really like that movie though with, um, I forget her name, but the woman that is in Pirates of the Caribbean, cause she was also in one of like the remakes liked that movie and then one with a happy doggo you know all four happy doggos dressed up as an elf the little dog that I babysit quite often I got her um gosh what is it um a reindeer outfit for the holidays 
and the first year that I had gotten it, it wouldn't button on her because she had gained a couple pounds from, you know, all the holiday treats that she was getting. But she fits into it now. But I remember the first year it was more of like an open ensemble because it wouldn't button. But sorry for the sidetrack. But I just thought it was so cute. She wore like an open cardigan basically. But the next page is so vibrant. I loved all the reds, you know, contrasting with the green. And of course, there's a cute little cat sitting by the fire. So really sweet. And again, this is all water-based markers mixed with a little bit of permanent markers. This page was super relaxing because it was just a little bit of everything. I think it's meant to be horizontal. Um, with this one, I also was kind of like forgetting some of the colors, so I just went in and colored it whatever I wanted with some of the candies just because I had already like put the marker away, but you know, you can't tell <laughs> because there's just so much happening, but yeah, very, very nice page, lots of candy. And then the last one in this book and in this video is this gingerbread house. So we're back at it with very interesting wallpaper. But the gingerbread house is very nice. I'm sure it was delicious. Um, I've actually never made a gingerbread house, but it looks really nice. I enjoy the extra effort of the chimney. They went above and beyond on that one and even had a little porch. So love that, love a good porch. <laughs> but yes, those, that's the last page that I did in here. It's amazing. Like these books are great. You know, since they're especially double, uh, single sided, you can use any medium that you want. You don't have to worry about anything. The paper is a little bit on the thicker side. You know, it's a standard Creative Haven paper. So you don't have to worry about it basically. So love these books. Again, I have five of them. I would love to get more. Um, I really want his newest one there. I forget what the one is called that is announced for next year. There is a seaside one that I'm a little on the fence about. I'm not really a water kind of person, but we'll see if I get that one at some point. But yeah, there's also like a garden one. He just has amazing stuff. I would love, love, love to get my hands on more of them. Maybe once I move, so I don't have to move with the books. But as I'm slowly starting to declutter my book collection, I think all of the George Defex's books are gonna make the cut as, as far as right now, I'm quite sure of that. So these books are amazing. If you end up getting any of these books, do let me know. We can also buddy color. Um, I will link all of them down below if you're interested. They're all amazing. And do of course also check out his newest release as well as the pre-order available for next year. But yes, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.